it was when we got home and we were in the house that I started to notice that, well, I was hearing masses of things that I'd never heard before. When you start hearing those things again, it, it's really quite emotional after all that time. I started hearing sounds in the house that I'd never heard before. And you start, you, it's quite, you think, this, look at that. You switch the light on and it goes click. I was shocked because the teaspoon was making a noise. It was going, you know, tinkle, 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 tinkle. And, and I was, I stopped and I looked at it and I thought, goodness, that's what stirring a cup of tea sounds like. But I'd forgotten. Obviously, I'd used to be able to hear that. But in recent years, if I heard anything at all, it was thud, thud, thud. But now it was tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. And it was... Stupidly, it was really quite emotional. It was like, oh, I remember this. I remember this sound. But I'd utterly forgotten that that's what, you know, having a teaspoon in a cup of tea sounded like. Speech took time and work, but environmental sounds, they just happened straight away. And it was a bit of a shock and it was a shock how much I liked it because I thought I didn't care about that but but when I started hearing them again I did care I did care after a couple of days Nigel and I went out for a walk with Izzy and that was fascinating because it was like a primary school nature walk with me saying, what's that? And I was saying, oh, that's a bird. What's that? That's an aeroplane. What's that? And it was our dog's paws squeaking on the frosty path. And there was a whole variety of sounds which I was hearing, which I'd not heard for such a long time. It was very encouraging that I was hearing all of this kind of almost immediately. A couple of days later, I was out on my own and a couple of sparrows flew right across in front of me and they were squabbling, you know, fighting with each other in the air and making a racket and it was, I could definitely hear the sparrows. And it was, um, yeah, it was, I keep on saying these things are quite emotional, but they are because you think, goodness, you know, I've not heard that sound for so long with birds. I've not heard the chirping sparrow song of a bird since my 30s. And to, you know, just a few days after an implant, be hearing a sound and know it's a singing bird or a chirping bird is, I mean, just how extraordinary is that? It's just unbelievable. We were doing the exercises that we had from the hospital. It's a good life. It's a good something. It's a good life. Life. Yeah. Is that your wife? Is that your wife? But to begin with, I was tired a lot. You know, my brain was working really hard to make sense of, of all this new stuff that was happening. So I was having to take things quite easily as well. I couldn't embark on you know, hours and hours worth of the exercises because uh, sometimes after 15 minutes I'd be so tired. I'd say to Nigel, stop, stop, I can't, I can't do any more. Is it the knife? Not sure. Is it the... Is it the knife? Is it the knife? Yeah. To begin with, I could hear what I was used to hearing, but quieter because I didn't have my hearing aid in. And, and then I could hear this squeaking all the time whenever he said anything. It was, it was a bit disconcerting, really, because I thought, well, how are these two things, you know, what's going to happen next? How are these two things going to come together? 
I started to be, to be aware that if I concentrated on the squeaking, it, it wasn't actually just squeaking, it was speech. But you didn't immediately realise that because it was much easier for my brain to latch on to the quieter sounds, the more low sounds that it was used to hearing. So after a while I start concentrating on this and thinking, goodness, yes, that is Nigel talking. It's just a different um, kind of octave of Nigel talking. So I think the next day I started, I started really trying to concentrate on that. And it was if, but it was if my brain was telling me not to. It was if my brain was still desperately hanging on to the quiet sounds of what it had got used to Nigel sounding like. And it didn't want to pay attention to this ludicrous squealing that's coming in the right side of my head. And I remember having a sort of an argument with my brain, strange though that is, to explain because I began to concentrate. I'm saying to it, you know, this is Nigel speaking. And my brain's desperately, desperately trying to ignore this squeaks and squeals. And it's as if my brain is saying, no, no, forget that, forget that. I don't know what it is. Nigel is this low pitch person. And eventually I just kept on, um, kept on doing that. And eventually, it's a funny thing to say, but it was almost as if I could sense my brain beginning to realise that this was also speech. That it was thinking, oh my goodness, yes, this is Nigel. It's a different Nigel, but this is Nigel. And it, it sounds stupid to say all this, but it's how it felt. It's really how it felt. And there was a huge amount of concentration on my part to try to latch on to that and realise that there was something happening here and, and also I could hear consonants which yeah I could hear some consonants before but mainly consonants had gone so it was really exciting to listen to this and to think oh, you know that's a consonant <laughs> I'm hearing a consonant so we persevered with that and it was like that for two days and then and I was thinking right what's going to happen next you know how does this resolve itself and then the strangest things happened on the on the on the night of the second day I went to bed and on the night of the third day on the morning of the third day sorry I got up and my brain had merged the two things together it was the most bizarre thing it was as if it said right I give up I give up this is Nigel it's all Nigel, we're going to listen to it all in one. And I don't understand how the brain works, but that was such, such a peculiar thing. It was like he'd had a night to think about it and then came up with a new strategy. To begin with, it sounded like a very strange accent, as if it wasn't the person I'm used to hearing, it was Nigel with a different accent somehow, which is plausible because I was hearing sounds I'd not heard for a long time. It was a bit odd. I kept teasing him that it was as if he had a Southern English accent, which he doesn't. Um, and then over time that went away and he now sounds perfectly normal, whatever normal is. But yeah, those, those early few days were really interesting. And I thought, and it's still, it still intrigues me what the brain was doing at that point, because you could almost feel it happening. When the two things merged together, it was really exciting because it was like, okay, I didn't know what was going to happen and now something has happened and it will continue being like this. And it was very gratifying that you could, you could feel progress happening. And at that point, you know, things weren't Things weren't easy, but the fact that the process was actually starting was really encouraging.